Hi folks, so the purpose of this video is, um, well first of all run two using um, a better setup hopefully than uh, the previous video with the pretty woeful microphone so huge apologies for that. So I had the car now uh, less than a week and already covered well, several hundred miles actually. That helped by having a nice weekend uh, down in Devon with family which is great. The car beautifully refined and for long journeys like that sitting on the motorway just cruising along absolutely wonderful it's just like any other luxury premium brand car that you'd expect not quite the levels of refinement that i've had in range rover full fat range rover but uh nevertheless still a very comfortable ride um so pretty content with that got through probably more fuel than i ought to have done but um that's all part and parcel of having a car like this really but great fun and the kids kids are really enjoying this car they love the noise and I hope to and look to and very shortly get the kids into the car to be able to um, give their thoughts and their views on it as well because I think that's certainly for, for me in a car like this there's no point having a car as a family vehicle when the kids are in it if they don't enjoy it as well and my kids definitely enjoy the car which is great really appreciate the comments and the um, interaction on the on the videos I've done so far um, very useful and also it helps helps me in terms of what, what you want to see about the car and what you want to hear about it uh, very happy to do various bits and bobs if, um, if there's something specific that you want to see or hear especially if you're considering either getting a car like this or if you're comparing it to the range of a sport which is probably its most direct competitor then I think it'd be useful you know, to fire your questions to me and I'm happy to answer them or stick it in a video um, for next time so um, I'll keep updating the channel as we go really enjoying this car I've, I've got got a Range Rover Sport booked with a friend of mine uh, um, to do a video but unfortunately that's not going to be until later on next week you can get away any, any sooner but that should be a really fun and really revealing sort of showdown um, I would love to know really in terms of what the two sound like together I had the first generation SVR and I know just how raucous and noisy that was this is not as noisy as that I have seen many reviews of the second generation that SVR not being not being quite as, as raucous. Actually, it'd be interesting to see how this how this compares to, to both those. Stay tuned for that. Hopefully, you saw my other video that I put up, um, which just did the sheer size comparison, which is just really just the external size, just the two the two cars side by side. Obviously, the F pace being that much lower, um, being more. Uh, I suppose car biased and, and the ability to do off-road so that made a big difference but the length uh, surprised me I thought it was a fair bit shorter but in actual fact the F pace is almost identical length and there's probably millimeters in it that's going to be very interesting to see how that compares on the road as well but I'm really enjoying this it's just such a lovely thing to drive and then having that power just under your foot when you want it and the ability to flick it into sport put it in dynamic mode and away you go that's great fun Slingshots round corners. I mean, just the exit from that roundabout then, just effortless. Put the power down and get to pass you. First things first, infotainment. Um, brilliant. Really good. Um, thankfully, an absolute step change from the Range Rover as old. I mean, I was so disappointed in 2013 when I got the new Range Rover when it came out, the infotainment was way, way, way behind the competition. Just the graphics, the speed, I mean, it was just, it was just woeful. Um, but this is excellent. I mean, they've even tweaked it up a notch from Ben R and Discovery 5, which I had not, not that long ago. Um, and, and actually, I'm really impressed. Um, it's intuitive, which it didn't used to be. And the speed of processor and the speed of, of how responsive it is to touch hugely improved. You know, in this generation and where we are at the moment with smartphones, with everything's absolutely instantaneous, it's just incredibly frustrating when you tap on the screen and there's that infinitesimal um, pause or delay for anything happening. You don't get that anymore. That is really good. Still being really niggly, um, there is a delay uh, with when you first get in the car, start the engine up, and when you want to get get an application um, route plumbed in. They could do with getting the start sequence the boot up, that could do with being a bit quicker. Because again, you get in the car, start the engine, the next thing you want to do is set the sat-nav if you're going somewhere and then set off on your journey. You've still got to wait, not long, but 
20 seconds, 30 seconds, something like that, which in this day and age it's too long really to wait for everything to boot up. That and the sat nav should be the first thing you boot up. You can wait for the media and everything else can come along later on. But you know, for me certainly one thing I want to do is put the sat nav in. Anyway, minor niggle, um, the rest of it really good. And especially now where you get the SIM card for the internet connectivity with the vehicle. I mean, again, that was something you didn't have to do before, uh, didn't have before, and you had to go and buy your own SIM card, which I just, uh, we're talking pennies, but I was a little bit begrudging of, I've already got my smartphone, why do I need another data plan? At least now, for at least the period of the warranty, which is the next, obviously the next three years, then I've got 500 megabytes or whatever it is per month for the data on there, which is probably enough, but I can update that if I need to. I haven't got a problem with ringing up and doing more, but, but it used, used to gripe me that I had to go out and buy another SIM card and have another data plan. Haven't had much chance to play with actually the use of that system in terms of when it connects to the internet and so forth, but I did a quick, quick bit of searching around and just the functionality which I really like is the, the ability to overlay the satellite imagery and to Google Street View and those sort of things um, onto the actual place where you want to, want to be locating. So if you're looking for a street house or something looking for a particular location, you can say, what does it look like? Ah, there it is out the window, got it, thanks. Um, not groundbreaking, nothing new. I mean, I had a, an Audi A4 courtesy car not so long ago, and actually that had exactly the same thing um, as standard, so I'm pretty sure this, this is speaking the same for across the range elsewhere. Um, but for Jaguar Land Rover, big thumbs up, well done, that's a big plus. The other thing that we made use of, um, which is an optional extra I added to this car, was the Apple CarPlay. Um, I've used it on a previous car and was reasonably impressed with it. I mean, you do have to plug it in, which is a bit of a nuisance, um, so you have got to have a lead with you, but that's no bad thing because it means you put your phone away without being tempted to go and look at it. So, and actually it works really well, so we, we use Spotify, so actually having your Spotify music and being able to flick through it on screen um, it is brilliant, uh, and it's something that I've not had pleasure of before, and I'm very pleased that Jaguar Land Rover have finally managed to incorporate that into their cars, again something has been missing, and I think, I think on the infotainment side in general, and I know I touched on this earlier on, I think there has been just some some lacking on Jaguar Land Rover's part in terms of keeping up to date with the competition. I think they're there now and I'm sure there's going to be quite a few other um, additional things that other manufacturers are going to be doing which Jaguar will have to keep on uh, on track with. Um, but for the time being uh, this is a pretty sorted car and from what I know it was elsewhere on the market and they're pretty up there. Other things I've picked up on the car, which um, again may well be speaking for just the family men, family women that are looking to this. With the kids in the car, the headrests are not removable. So these aren't removable, not a problem in the front seats, but in the back seats. Um, when you've got a car seat for a four and a six year old like my kids, the top of the headrest of that actually sticks back quite far. So what I frequently used to do in the other car is remove the headrest entirely, otherwise it pushes the whole seat forward quite a lot. You can't do that in this. Um, that's a bit, a bit frustrating because it does mean that the kids are sitting slightly more upright than I'd like them to. However, in the F-Pace, or in the standard F-Pace, of course, you can then recline the back seats. So you have the ability, whether it's power recline or, or, or manual recline, to tilt the seats back to negate that. The problem with the SVR, they've taken that functionality out. So if you are thinking about buying one of these for your kids, I would strongly suggest with the car seat you've got, potentially go and take it into a showroom or even practice in another SVR with the headrest still attached and see how upright your kids are. Forcing the seats that I've got, you can actually slide the base out so you can actually make it so they can sit in a comfortable position, but otherwise I'd find them being quite upright. Not from a safety point of view from being too upright, but just from when they, we're travelling, like we did on the way back from Devon, we travel in the evenings, we often do, kids fall asleep. Actually, the ability to loll forward and put their head forward and then they get stiff necks, it's just not very nice and not very comfortable for them. Still haven't found a better solution for this yet. So I need to do a bit more searching online because even actually on the Jaguar Land Rover website, they don't sell um, a seat cover, a uh, back cover for the SVR. Um, so I'm gonna have to do a bit more hunting around in terms of finding a better solution for this. Because absolutely with these kind of seats, I need some protection for my little children and their little feet, um, making their permanent mark and graffiti in the back of my chairs. More practical stuff then. Um, so one of the comments in the previous video asked about how comfortable these seats were. Now I did mention on the walk around video um, in my earlier video that uh, they were incredibly thin. Now they are very thin, um, but but don't let that sort of make you think that they are um, uncomfortable. They're actually um, they are very supportive. Now for me, I actually feel like they are almost like a bespoke made seat because you can make that adjustment and they really hug you in the sides. So the side bolsters here um, with the adjustment on those, obviously you can pump those up like you can on many other cars with um, 
with that sort of feature, um, but it really holds you in. And it's the seat isn't quite like a you know like a racing bucket seat, but it's not far off, and it's got a good high high bolster on the side. But having said that, someone that's of, of a larger girth than me, should we say, um, I don't think they'd struggle to get in here. I don't think they'd find it uncomfortable. Um, I mean, the headrest doesn't have any adjustment to it, but it's just at the right height, so you can rest your head whilst you're driving longer distances. But at the same time, it doesn't push your head too far forwards, but it's still there to support you as well. Mm -hmm. But I do feel that, that the seats in general are certainly one of the defining features of, of just why I'm, you know, again, why I'm just enjoying the general driving round both in comfort. And we get a long test, as I say, we drove down to Devon for, um, for a good few hours each way. And uh, I drove down, my wife drove back, jumped out the car, fresh as a daisy. Uh, I mean, it was a long drive, and just cruising along the motorway, but, but actually didn't feel tired, didn't feel overly fatigued by by the length of the journey because it was just it was a lovely place to be, a lovely serene place to be. Actually, the seats and the driving position are just just right, really nicely set up.